Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this AP Chemistry video, we're going to take a look at Unit 7, Sections 2 and 3. Now, Section 2 is about the relative rates of reactions and how they affect the position of equilibrium. So let's imagine that we have a reaction where we have a very fast forward reaction, but a, a relatively slow reverse reaction. Well, if that's the case, then we're going to have more products than reactants when we attain equilibrium. Likewise, if we have the opposite process, if we have uh, perhaps a very fast reverse reaction, but a very slow forward reaction, that means that when we attain equilibrium, we're going to have a whole lot more uh, reactants than we have products. And so you need to be aware of those relative rates and how they affect the position of equilibrium and how that works. Now as we move on to section 3 here in unit 7, this is about something we call the equilibrium constant. This is a numerical way to talk about the relationship between reactants and products at equilibrium. This is called the equilibrium constant. The way you calculate the equilibrium constant for a reaction is you basically just take the concentrations of the products over the concentrations of the reactants multiplied by each other and then you will raise that to the power of the coefficient. So what that means is the equilibrium constant which we call K is equal to like I said products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient. So it's the concentration of NH3 squared, and it's squared because of that 2 right there, all over the concentration of nitrogen times the concentration of hydrogen, H2, raised to the third power. And the th th that third power is coming from this coefficient 3. Now in chemistry, whenever we have something in brackets, like you see here in this expression, brackets represent the concentration in moles per liter. So hopefully you remember something about molarity and how to calculate that, just moles divided by liters. Now there are several different types of equilibrium constants. We're going to learn several of them in this unit. The first one that we're going to look at here is called K sub C, or sometimes it's called KC. And that C right there represents the fact that we're talking about equilibrium in terms of concentration. C for concentration. And that's why we have the molarity right here. Now let's try an example problem with that. We're going to use this same equation. In the production of ammonia, a mixture of nitrogen and hydrogen gases are allowed to react and reach equilibrium at 350 kelvins. At equilibrium, the concentration of ammonia gas is 1.98 molar, while nitrogen equals 0.031 molar, and hydrogen equals 0 0.010 molar. Calculate the equilibrium constant for this reaction at 350 kelvins. So we're going to use that same expression that we just wrote. Products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficients. So just like we had before there. And we're just going to plug and chug. If we're trying to find the equilibrium constant, well, we're going to solve for Kc. The concentration of ammonia is given to us as 1.98 molar. So that goes in for NH3, and of course that's going to be squared. In the denominator, we have N2. Its concentration is 0.031 molar, so I'll plug it in right there. And then the concentration of hydrogen is 0.010 molar. So that's going to be cubed from our expression. And then you need a calculator, preferably a scientific calculator, to you know, calculate all this and see what it's equal to. And you'll find that Kc is equal to about 1.3 times 10 to the 8th. So that's a pretty big number. We'll talk about what the significance of that very big number means in uh, our upcoming section here that we take a look at. Now, just so you know, equilibrium constants have no units. So don't worry about trying to say a molarity squared and all that. No, it, it doesn't actually work. And the reason for why equilibrium constants have no units is a little bit uh, complicated. It is beyond the scope of AP chemistry, but you can trust me on that, that equilibrium constants do not have any units. And so just leave off units. Now let's try writing the equilibrium constant expressions 
Kc, for each of these reactions. And so once again, all we're doing is writing the thing with the brackets there, products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient. So here's the first equation. 3NO gas yields N2O gas plus NO2. Well, it's N2O times NO2 concentration all over NO, and that NO has to be cubed because of that, that 3 is its coefficient. Now just be aware that when it says write an equilibrium constant expression, that means an equation. So you have to write Kc equals. You can't just write the, the stuff that's on the right side of the, the expression here and expect to have full credit. It is an equation. And so you need to write the full thing to get full credit to have the full expression there. Here's another one. We have 2C2H4, so that looks like uh, ethene, I believe, plus 2 water gas yields 2C2H6, which is ethane gas, plus oxygen gas. So it's done the same way. Kc equals, and it's going to be C2H6 squared times O2 to the first power, because there's no other coefficient here, all over C2H4 squared times the concentration of H2O squared. So we can see there's our equilibrium constant expression, products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient. So that's how you write an equilibrium constant expression. Now, seems pretty easy, straightforward. There is a little bit of a catch. If you have an equation or a reaction that has a liquid in it or a solid, leave those out. Omit liquids and solids from equilibrium constant expressions. Because liquids and solids, I mean, they have concentrations, but they don't really change throughout the course of a reaction. And as a result, they do not affect equilibrium. So just leave them out. So if you have a problem like this, where you have carbon solid plus two hydrogen gas yields methane, well, as you write this, it's going to be Kc equals CH4 concentration all over H2 quantity squared. And you just leave out the carbon because it's a solid, and so it's not going to be a part of this at all. Uh, in this next equation, this looks like a, a redox reaction that we might have written back in unit 4. We're going to, once again, well, once again, leave out the solid. So it's going to be Kc equals Ag plus quantity squared all over Zn2 plus. And that's all it is. We, we, we're going to leave out the solids, the zinc, the silver metals. Those are not a part of this. So there we have how to write the equilibrium constant expressions for pretty much any chemical reaction that, that anybody could throw at you. And on the AP exam, they are going to ask you to do probably more than one of these. And this is always sometimes a part A in a, uh, a, a multi-step uh, free response question. Now, you need to be aware, like I said earlier, Kc is not the only kind of equilibrium constant. Sometimes, especially if we're dealing with gases, it's more convenient to talk about uh, the amount of the reactants and products we have in terms of partial pressure of a substance. In that case, concentration might not be too practical. Now, if we're talking about the amount of the substances in terms of pressure, we don't call it Kc anymore because Kc represents concentration. If we're talking about pressure, we use Kp, Kp. Now it's actually written the exact same way. It's still products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient. The only difference is it's going to be in terms of partial pressures. So we don't use those brackets. It's the same equation as you can see here, but if we're going to write the expression for Kp, it's going to look like this. Kp equals the partial pressure of the ammonia squared all over the partial pressure of the nitrogen times the partial pressure of the hydrogen quantity cubed. It works the same way, except if it's Kp, you have to write it in terms of partial pressure. If it asks for Kp and you put those brackets in there instead of, well, the p's here, you're going to be wrong because Kc, that's the one with the brackets, Kp is partial pressure. 
Make sure that you're able to keep those straight. I hope you've learned something about equilibrium constants and how equilibrium and relative rates uh, play into this. If you learned something, please smash that thumbs up button. I'm Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for 24 years, and I hope you get a five on your AP exam. In my next video, we're moving right on to Unit uh, 7, Section 4. Thanks for watching.